Okay, ladies and gents, we're going to see if we can draw a Sankey diagram for the data that you've been given, either on paper or in this Excel sheet. We're going to look at the gas hob, and we're going to take note of the fact that the input energy is 100 joules of chemical energy. Gas contains chemical energy. And the output energy that's useful is heat. So I guess what you use a hob for is to heat food up. And that's 90 joules. And there's two forms of wasted energy. That's light at 5 joules and sound at 5 joules. I guess it's a bit of a hissy gas stove and some of this energy is being wasted. So what we're going to do is we can convert that to a Sankey diagram to show where this energy goes. We're going to start in Excel and we're going to start a new sheet. And you're going to click in the top left to highlight all the cells. And then you're going to click on Divide between cell A and B and the cursor will change to that little cross. And you're going to click and hold and drag it across till it gets to 20 pixels and remove the mouse. And then you're going to click on the divide between two numbers, say 5 and 6. This time you get an up and down arrow. And you're going to click and drag till that gets to 20 pixels. And what you should find is that the screen becomes like a little piece of graph paper whole bunch of squares on the screen, 20 pixels on each side. Now if we go back to our sheet, our gas hob took in 100 units of chemical energy. So in our sheet that we're going to draw our Sankey diagram, we're going to draw a column to correspond to those 100 units, 100 joules of energy. I'm going to say that each square is worth 5 joules. So I need to draw and select 20 squares down to represent my input energy. So there's 20 and I'm going to colour it in yellow. That's my 20 joules or my 100 joules of input energy. Let's drag it out a little bit and colour it yellow again to show my input energy. Now 90 of that is what I want. So this time I'm going to select column corresponding 90 joules. So from here down to here is my 90 joules. And I'm going to put an arrow on the end, the traditional way. So I'm going to insert a shape and go for the arrow. And I'm going to draw an arrow. And I'm going to drag the arrow to fill the gap at the end of the shape. And I'm going to make it yellow so that we can't see it. Oh, fill it with yellow and make sure it joins up and that there corresponds to my 90 joules. Coming down at the bottom here we've got 5 joules of light that we want to drop out and 5 joules of heat, um, sorry, 5 joules of sound that we don't want. So I'm going to insert this time a shape and I'm going to go for the bent arrow shape, this kind of shape. Now I want it pointing down so I'm going to pick up the green handle and spin it down. Each of the squares on your screen now is worth 5 joules. So I need to make my arrow 5 joules thin. Because we had 5 joules of light and 5 joules of sound. So there we go, that arrow there now corresponds to 5 joules of light. Maybe make it a little bit thinner because I don't like the arrow head to be too fat. Because it's a bit misleading. And I'm going to drag that down there like that which shows me that I've got 5 joules of wasted energy falling out of the bottom. I'm going to click and hold the cursor control key and drag the arrow out to make a copy of the arrow. Now I've got two arrows. I'm going to make them yellow, so I'm going to double select them and I'm going to fill them in yellow and outline them in yellow. Now maybe this second arrow I want to shove a bit further along like that and maybe I'll make it a bit longer like that too as well. So now we've got 100 joules of input energy being converted to 90 joules of output that we want and 5, 10 joules of output that we don't. So I think it's time to label it up somewhat. Let's go for some text boxes. So now we've got 90 joules of output which in this case is heat and that's what we want isn't it? So let's make that a bit bigger and I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to put no fill 
and no outline. So I'm just going to whack that down there. We do the same as I did before. I'm going to hold control and drag. So I can change that to five joules of light. But in this case I don't want. And I'm going to drag it over there. Another five joules of sand. That I equally don't want. Maybe I'll drag it a bit closer to the arrow so we know what the arrows correspond to. Tidy up a little bit. I think if I wanted to be really picky, I'd put it at the end of the arrows. And then we've got a hundred joules of input. So I'm going to pick that up there. I'm going to spin it round so it's that way around. And I'm going to put a hundred joules of input. And what goes into my gas hob is chemical energy. So I've got 100 joules of input. Now I think I probably wanted to fill as much of that as possible. So I'm going to alter the formatting so it's as centered as much as possible. If I can get that centered on my little box. Oops, there we go. If I can get that centered as much as possible, maybe make the font a bit bigger. Well, to do it when it's rotated through 90 degrees. Moral of the story is write it first maybe and then rotate it afterwards because it is hard. Make it a bit bigger. I've got 100 joules of input energy which is chemical going to 90 joules of output heat, 5 joules of output light, 5 joules of output sound. And just for completeness in the box I'm going to put a gas hob which is the name of the device maybe make it nice and big, plonk it in the center. So there's a Sankey diagram showing the 100 joules of input energy. What we want stays here along the top, but what we lose, what we waste, drops out of the bottom. So that's how you create a Sankey diagram for this data here, for the gas hob, 100, 90, 5 and 5. And there are some further examples that you've been given, wind turbine food mixer, that I'd like to see if you can create a Sankey diagram similar to that in Excel and then email it to me. Thanks a lot.